Welcome to The Simple Truth. I'm John Furnish, your Bible teacher. We're in the book of Hebrews, and we've been titled this series of God's Heavenly Orders. Uh, and, we, and we talk about His plan, um, how He, through the ages, uh, set out this plan that would establish for the foundation of the world uh, and, and how He's bringing it through uh, different people's lives. And now through you and I, for the completion of his plan at whatever time that's going to be. Uh, we don't have a timeline on when it's going to happen. We just know that it will. Uh, last week I was talking about Moses. I talked about his birth um, and how his parents, after three months, uh, put him in a, a reed basket and sent him afloat on the Nile River and how God had... Uh, provided provision for him to be taken into where Pharaoh's daughter was and she took him as her own and was raised as an Egyptian. Um, and yet we find, uh, we'll start with verse 24, chapter 11 of Hebrews, verse 24. Uh, By faith Moses, when he came of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He realized that he was a Hebrew and not an Egyptian. Uh, he had to make a choice. Just like you and I, we have to make a choice of whether we're going to accept Christ or not accept Him. Uh, he accepted not to be Pharaoh's daughter, but to be a Hebrew. Uh, verse 20, Choose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Uh, esteeming the, the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Egypt. So he looked to the reward. So here we, we see that last week we talked about what faith is. Faith is believing that God is and that He is a rewarder of those who believe. In other words, we believe in the promises. Uh, each one of these uh, people that we've talked about so far uh, has believed that God not only is, but He was a he would reward them or that he would keep his promises that he has made to them. <clears throat> and so verse 27, by faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as he seed, as in, as seeing him who is invisible. The he here is talking about Moses forsake Egypt. In other words, he, he denied Egypt and believed in the invisible God, even though he was ousted from the country. <clears throat> By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so, were drowned. So here we have the rest of the story here. Now, <clears throat> from the time that he left Egypt until the time that he came back, uh, is, is a, I think it's around 40 years, where he was a shepherd. Uh, he kept sheep for his father-in-law. But now, at verse 27, it shows him God has met him at the, at the uh, burning bush uh, and, and has given him commandments to go back and set his people free out of Egypt, to lead them out of Egypt. Um, he, didn't, he went back knowing what God had said is going to happen and he didn't fear the king for what he could do, but believed God instead. <clears throat> and at, at the end of, of those plagues that was in Egypt at the time, because of the hardness of Pharaoh's heart, the last one brings us into the Passover where they killed a Passover lamb and that uh, they gave strict rules of how it was supposed to be done and that the blood of the lamb was to be put on the post of the door and over the lintel uh, and that when the death angel came by it would not touch the firstborn in that house, but pass over or pass on to the next one. And then, and then Pharaoh lets them go. He tells them to get out. And, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing this and I'm, I'm jumping through because there's a lot of material in between there. Um, but uh, 
they, they, as they're leaving Egypt, they come to the Red Sea. And of course, if you've read this story in the Old Testament, Pharaoh's armies on coming at them to destroy them and, and, and bring them back to Egypt. And there's the Red Sea in front of them. So they're kind of between <laughs> what we would say a rock and a hard place in their passing. But <clears throat> God used Moses to part the Red Sea and the Hebrews crossed on dry land, which there's, you know, a couple of miracles in itself there, because you know if it's been wet that long for it to be on the bottom of the sea, it's mud. But it was dry land where they crossed over. But when the Egyptian, the Egyptians said, okay, well, they made it across, we were in two, well, they drowned. So it's, we see God's provision and then his deliverance from the enemies. And we can, we can have that deliverance today too. That whether it's sickness or whether it is uh, from uh, persecution, uh, there is a time when we will have deliverance. God will give us a way out. Okay. Verse 30, <clears throat> by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had encircled for uh, seven days. By faith, the heart of uh, Ahab, Rahab, I'm sorry, uh, did not perish with those who did not believe when she was received the, spy, the spies with peace. So in this story here, we're talking about the, the city of Jericho when, when Joshua now leads Israel or the Hebrews because Moses is dead. He's dead and they're crossing into the promised land and um, they encircled the city. They walked around it seven times and the last time they blew the trumpets and the walls fell out, <clears throat> allowing them to rush into into the, the stronghold of the city and defeat the enemy. But because Rahab in verse uh, <clears throat> 20 or 31 had hidden the, the two spies that came into the city when, when everyone was looking for them and let them down out of the city safely that <clears throat> they said they would protect her, that she, would, she and her household would be protected because she believed that God could, okay? Uh, I know I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, and, and, and we should go back to the Old Testament and look at these real close, and we may do that uh, at another date. Verse 32, And what more shall I say, for the time would fall, fail me to tell you of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephaniah, uh, also David and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, uh, escaped the edge of the sword, out of, the, out of weakness were made strong because became valiant in battle, uh, turned to flight the enemies of the aliens. Uh, women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trials of mocking and scourging saying, uh, yes, and the chains of imprisonment. They were stoned. They were uh, sawed in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin, goatkin, and being destitute, afflicted and tormented of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in the deserts and the mountains and dens and caves of the earth. And all these having obtained a good testimony through faith did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us. So here he, 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 he's talking about those who overcome by faith, even though they endured Persecution. They endured trials. Uh, some was, was given victory over things and some were not. Now, we don't quite understand the reasoning behind why some uh, subdued kingdoms and others was killed. Uh, only that 
is a part of God's plan. And we just got to accept it as God's plan. But he also is telling us here that by faith, whether, whether it was being the deliverer of, of as Moses was of the uh, Hebrews out of Egypt, or of uh, someone like Gideon who won battles because of his faithfulness. But he was telling us that, that even though we have those winning, those victories, we also have the tough times that we go through. And one is just as important as the other. And in whichever it is, whether it is trials or victory, still have faith in the one God who is and able to deliver us. Now, we don't think so much of, of dying or, or being in disease or, or something like that as being in a place of deliverance, but we will be because of the promise we have in Jesus Christ of an eternal kingdom where there will be no more tears, where there will be no more pain. Uh, we look forward to that promise knowing that what we're in now is temporal. Everything that you see now will only be temporal. It is the word of God that is eternal and is true. But everything that we see in this physical realm will wear out, break down, pass away, including ourselves. But our soul and our spirit will live forever. Now, it says in verse 40 that, or 39 that they had this testimony of faith through whatever they went through. And that tells me today that we need to have faith no matter what we're going through. But continue in the faith. Stay steadfast to the one who is able to deliver us, who is able to heal us, who is able to take us into a promised land and to a new city, a heavenly city that's made by the hands of God and not by man. He talks about in verse 40, God having provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us. So you see, in this faith walk, we are being perfected. Okay. Old Testament saints was looking forward to the Messiah coming. The one only begotten son of God who would come and take away the sins of the world. We look back to the cross, to Jesus who died on it, who took away the sins of the world. They look forward to that time, not seeing it. We look back to that time, believing that it's happened. And that helps us, whether, whether before or after Christ, to be perfected together, one-on-one. -on -one. You know, with him. Chapter 12, uh, we're going to talk about this race of the faith uh, that we live in. It's talking about the things that we need. This is all part of God's heavenly order for us. The, the, his plan uh, through the ages that we've been talking about in verse or in chapter 11 through now. And it's all a faith walk. It's not just seeing what what is, but believing it before we see it. Uh, verse one, therefore, we also, since we are Surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sins which so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race which was set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God, uh, the right hand of of the throne of God and talking about he sat down when you're working, you don't sit down until it's done. Right. Well, that's the same thing he's talking about here. When he had finished all that he needed to do, then God, the father honored him by setting him at his right hand on the throne of God. 
But verse 1 tells us we have this great cloud of witnesses. We have all these Old Testament saints that we read about and that we know happened. And we believe that God was with them through those things because of their faithfulness. You know, we're told without faith we can't please God. They pleased God because they believed what He said. And we are doing that same now. And I want you to know, though Paul's here, and I believe Paul wrote this book, that he's talking about the Old Testament saints, that Christ crowd of witnesses. I want you to know that I, I have some witnesses that has been in my life that are no longer alive here, but with the Lord that shows faithfulness. No, they didn't meet the Bible, the book of God, but their names written in the book of life. And that cloud of witnesses is a part of these that we, we read about in the, in the word. Uh, that they endured the race. They set aside anything that kept them back. Instead of making excuses why we couldn't go on, they said we're going on even though. We set aside sin that, that entangles us and slows us down and, and finally destroys us. But ran the endurance of the race. Was it easy? Is it easy today? No. It is a difficult race with the way the world we live in now. But it's worth it because God tells us of the blessings and the promises He has given to us through His Son, Jesus, that we now can know that no matter what we go through here, it's not going to compare. It's only a moment in time to what will be in eternity. We can look forward to our author, Christ Jesus, and we can have joy in Him because He endured, despite being a sh being sh you know, shamed. You know, we, we sometimes think that, that well, I'll be embarrassed if I do that. Well, I can't think of anything more embarrassing than to be hung on a cross with nothing on but a crown of thorns. That, that's got to be more embarrassing than anything I've ever <laughs> accomplished in, in that sense. And yet he endured it for you and I so that we could have salvation, so that he was, he was willing to shed his blood and die on that cross for you and I. And he was willing to go through that and end up going into hell itself and leading the captives, and that was the Old Testament saints that was trusting in him, captive out of a place called Bosom of Abraham, or paradise and took them to heaven when he went. And you and I now, without having to go that far, go straight to heaven when we take our last breath. I am glad that Jesus went into the depths of the earth, hell itself, and preached the gospel to the saints that who've been believing in his coming for generations. And now he spent three days there. We don't have to spend a second there. We haven't made. And he was willing to do that for us. So we ought to be willing to live for him. Verse three, for considering him who endured such hostility, uh, from sinners against him, least you become weary and discouraged in your soul. We have, we have God, the, the praise that Jesus was willing to do all that for us. So we ought to be willing to live for him. Verse 4, you have not yet uh, resisted to bloodshed, uh, striving against sin. Now, what he's talking about there. Uh, you have not yet resisted or, or um, f being that living sacrifice unto being a martyr, dying for a cause. 
And the cause here is for Christ. And he's saying, you haven't shed blood yet. You haven't died for me yet. But there will be some of you that will. Verse 5, and you have forgotten the exhort exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when he, you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Do you understand that this is from Proverbs 3, uh, chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. Uh, and he's talking about that the, the things that we go through, that we are uh, chastened or, or, or punished a little bit so that we would do right and not continue to do wrong. That we would not continue in sin, but to move into His will and His plan for your personal life, which is in the major plan of His plan that He has for, for all of, of eternity. Um, I, I know that when I first came to Christ and I, it seemed like Every day I did something wrong and I would be convicted of it and, and, and chastened of it. And, and I thought, you know, sometimes more than once a day. Uh, and yet from those times uh, I learned that that wasn't right. And I learned what he expected and I learned how to trust him. That through the discipline that I received, it's gotten to a point now where he can just speak to me and I don't have to go through those things that, that are very hurtful. You learn to listen instead of fight against. Uh, verse 7, if you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there among whom a father does not chasten. In other words, uh, I teach you the right way to do things. I'm teaching you how to be holy, how to uh, please me. And it's not, you know, he's not doing it because he hates us. He's doing it because he loves us. The same as a father would discipline a son, not because he hates them, but because he loves them and he wants to do him, him to do better and to stay away from things that could hurt him far worse. Uh, verse 8, but if you are without chastening of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. It, I, I'm not sure how else to put it that way, but, but if you're still rebellious, you're not a son. Or a daughter. You've gone against the father. Verse 9. Moreover, we have human fathers who correct us and we pay them respect. Shall we not more uh, readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and live? Here again. We should have respect for our parents. But more for our heavenly father who has given his son to die for us, that we should live for him <clears throat> uh, so that we can be sons and daughters of God, that we can be of the family of a God. Verse 10, for they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them, but he for our prophet that we may be partaker of his holiness. So you see the chastening that we receive is to bring us closer to his holiness, to his perfection. Do you understand that God sees us as perfect? We don't see ourselves that way, but we can know the promise that he gives us that through Jesus, the, the author of our faith and the finisher of our faith, that we will become holy as he is holy because he's willing to work in you and I, the, even though Sometimes we're a little stubborn. Okay. 
Verse 11. <clears throat> Uh, now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. <clears throat> so you see, <clears throat> it's not the moment that, that we want to hold on to. <clears throat> we need to see that it is taking us to a better place to learn a better thing. He's leading us into a peaceful righteousness instead of into lawlessness. He does it out of love, not just to be punishing us. So we need to understand that the chastening that God does is always tempered with His mercy, always willing to, to go the extra mile. Um, I can tell you from experience of mine that that God has always lovingly corrected me when I was wrong. He's always corrected me when it was sometimes I didn't want to be corrected. I didn't want to go through that. I wanted to do my own thing. But I found out through his love that it was always best to follow him. And it was always a blessing, not only to me, but it became a blessing unto other people as we go through these trials and errors that we have made, that we learn that uh, we no longer have to live that way, but we can live for Him and be a blessing, not only for ourselves, but we find out we've become a blessing for other people and that we are an encouragement that in a sense we become part of that cloud of witnesses that he talked about earlier in this chapter, uh, in chapter 11, that you and I now can be a part of that witness and that we can be a part of that cloud because of faithfulness. Again, faith is Believing that God is and that he is a rewarder or a or a, he's going to do the promises that he has set for us in eternity. And I pray that you will accept him today and follow after him with a full heart.